and what do you call that thing when people take a caveat or something as mm -hmm. you were saying earlier? Yeah. Anything that comes out of these guys' mouths was not sponsored by me. <laughs> <laughs> it's everyone's personal opinion. Yeah. Hi. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, but this is where my head is. This is why I want you guys. First off, mm. you because it's so evident in your music. The mm. last like. Um, Clone was that it's important to start talking about political change and mm -hmm. the way that things are happening in this country, mm -hmm. um, what, it, what it is that people are going through, people are suffering, mm -hmm. whether our leaders are actually aware of all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want it to be like, we'll talk about things that are happening or things that have been done like mm -hmm. in our government, but most importantly is that if it's looking at this concept of if this isn't the right idea, what mm. is the right idea? Mm. What do we need to be doing? What needs to change in the structure mm. of Nigeria um, to actually get leadership working for its people? I think where we're at right now is first to accept that, like, you know, we're currently operating in, for all intents and purposes, a failing nation, failing on so many different levels, um, but mo mostly failing like the citizens of the nation because the very basic things like healthcare, education, electricity, all those things are things that like, you know, we're, they're not even getting better. We're not looking at the position that, okay, we're close to the promised land. Like it seems yeah. like we're straying further away. Um, and that's just on a basic level. Then also failing in the sense that like for the everyday man on the street, things are getting more difficult like yeah. things it's harder to get money to feed yourself feed your family raise your family and and what that does there's a song on our album um Palmoy music too called the garden and what we're trying to talk about in that is yeah, that like, like if you leave a garden untended for a very long time it sort of becomes a jungle and now we've left the garden not even untended but i almost feel we're at the point where we're kind of deliberately sabotaging the garden yeah. um and expecting people to come out sane so the animals in the garden or the, and in that analogy the people are getting wilder they're getting you know yeah. they're getting more you know more desperate you know and, and that's just a byproduct of this failed leadership and, and and it's not just failed leadership in terms of just the vacuum of the last 10 years like failed leadership for as long as i can remember yeah. i've never lived in a country where i can say this leader actually cared about like he's a populist leader who cares about the people i've i've, I've, yet, I've yet to see that yeah you know, so well to be honest i have to start off by saying there's a few governors out here who have surrounded themselves with young people and are looking and to me seem as if they're, they, they're taking steps in the right direction. They're focused on IGR, which is very important. And this, I, I, without going too deeply into eco economics, IGR for Nigeria is one of the most important things. Now, for me personally, I've lost faith in the government. I believe it's up to us, you know, the private sector. Yeah. Um, when the recession hits, how many years ago it was, you know, the private sector, more, more importantly, creative arts and us, mm -hmm. more or less pulled Nigeria out of this recession. Anybody can take the credit for it, but the amount of industry shown in Nigeria by us, the young people, is incredible. Yeah. So without the government, we've been forced to find our ways to survive. There's no jobs. Yeah. We're not even looking for jobs. Who, who do you, if it's not the government, you're going to start your own business or do your yeah. own thing. It is, that's a very sad situation, you know. I believe it's up to us. Yeah. The government cannot do or does not do anything for us because the truth of the matter is that the situation in Nigeria is not that hard to, to fix. There's so many countries who have had much less than us who have made it out of nothing, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Singapore, but more, more, more obviously Dubai. Dubai, yeah. yeah. It is, borrowed money from us. it is ridiculous. Yeah. And the worst part about it is that the kind of corruption that goes on in Nigeria is not even, it's flagrant, it doesn't even make sense to me. Because yeah. you'd make more money so by giving so yourself... She benefits. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Generational yeah. wealth. Mm -hmm. Legacy. It's lacking. People don't do it. People mm -hmm. don't... We've talked, I was talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. um, why, why is that? But we have, we've been, like you said, I think one of the things that we were set up to fail, this mm. is the fact that we have to understand that we, and we haven't by who? grasped that by the British. When, when we were colonized, we were set up to fail. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, can what, I, what's can changed? I, but sorry, can I, can I just jump in? Two things. I feel like 
There is, I feel like, to be very honest with you, most colonized countries were set up to fail. And even within that context of most colonized countries being set up to fail, some of them have experienced other things like genocide and wars. I'm talking about African countries yeah, primarily. So yeah, but then at the same time, a lot of those countries are beginning to, even within the restrictions of the failure that they've been set, the, the way the game has been rigged, a lot of them are beginning to do, uh, sprout up. Yeah. And that's because there's a clear concerted effort to move forward. Yeah. If you go to Rwanda now, it's that's different. Exactly what I was it's different, about. like 20 years from a genocide. There's no but then there's no a, Tutsi anymore. Yeah, yeah. there's a collective and so effort. So that's the thing. My point is that one of our issues is we were set up to, to, um, to, set up to fail, mm -hmm. but we have not stepped out of that culture exactly. mindset. You can still speak to people today, as much as they're demanding a one better for their country, mm -hmm. will still argue by tribal lines. Mm -hmm. Which is why I said it's two it's issues. But then, but then, so it's, me, let me, the, just, I think that like, that's why very early on I said, the, the, I feel like the government or the system here is set up to deliberately sabotage the garden, which is Nigeria, because, because they operate on tribal and, and religious lines for their campaigning, for their elections, for everything. They are pushing that agenda directly. So it can't be like, if, if, you, if you look at any country in the world, if you go to America, for example, the kids at school, they're taught the pledge, yeah. they're taught, they're, they're, they're indoctrinated from a very early age to love their country. America's the greatest, like, we go around the world and do, and they paint a very clear picture to their kids. So these things are policy. Like, anybody looks, look at, just take one single aspect, like, Lagos is filthy. And that's yeah. because it's, it's a concerted effort to push recycling or to push clean, but we're not even thinking of how we're going to, like, yeah. I feel like deliberately, like our government and the people in, in power are actually playing on all these things. Yeah, of course they are. I don't even want to talk about the negative parts. I want to focus on the solutions. On solution. exactly the solutions. Yeah. So what is it that we start to do? Because I've had... First of all, I want Nigerians, the young us, the highest demographic, 70%, we're already doing the right thing. But we need to encourage each other. We need to start proper industries and take the power back. We need to control the media. We need to control the banks. We need to have our own lending facilities and support each other across tribal lines. Because the truth of the, truth of the matter is, I am not a tribalist. No matter what uh, my, 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 you know, my people or where I'm from, how they feel, at my age being educated, and I find that most people in Nigeria are not actually, the young people are not actually like that one-on-one. -on -one. I have friends that cut across everything, and I don't know if it's just the demographic that I'm from, because I cannot honestly speak cannot for speak the whole for, of Nigeria. And that's the issue, and I think that's one of the issues, because we talk, and we have a certain level of education and opportunity mm -hmm. that we've been afforded, mm -hmm. but now what about the people who are so limited in their um, exposure? Because they're not, this they're is not that limited trapped. anymore. No, but we talk about that, this. They, they are. There are a lot of people that are. No, but the young people are they really? They, yeah, no, they are. Because like, we, we, we still think. Them. No, no, not in a not. Sorry to like not in a not in a in a in a way where like yeah they 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 don't have access. They have access to things. But if you think about it, if you go around this country, right, like you'll be surprised at the amount of in my opinion, suffering that people are going through. So people are literally just trying to figure out how to get the next like meal, how, yeah. to, how to continue to keep hustling. You know, so, and, and when that is your mindset, you can't start thinking beyond your immediate needs because your immediate needs are so pressing, so pressing. that like, you have to focus on and your them. your access to even solve those immediate needs yeah. are so, what, so limited. So what are the solutions? First of all, people that have these, these ideas mm -hmm. need to get into government. Yeah. But then, you know, We've come through on the way. How do we get into government? Yeah, how do we get into government on mass where there's a level of unity that can be influential? Because if you get there one at a time, you're not really gonna have. You're, you can't mm -hmm. penetrate. Mm -hmm. So how do we start to get into position government? Especially because the focus of us are with it between Abuja, Lagos, um, PH, all those kind of places. How do we cut to wider spaces? Because if you're gonna have real influence in Nigeria, then you need seats in National Assembly that cut across mm -hmm. the, um, other states and not just the major states, but people aren't going to the, major, to the other states. We're all focusing ourselves mm -hmm. on coming to where the limited access to money seems mm -hmm. to be. 
I, th- I think. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't feel like you know that's you know that a direct approach would work because we've seen it in the last elections. We know what what goes on in elections. There's no need for us to waste our time. Yeah. Everybody knows the real power is the money. So, like I said, we must focus on this private sector, develop our own personal industries, develop our own exports, which do not have to be material, it could be services, which we already do. Nigeria leads the world in the biggest, uh, what's it called? Brain drain. We run run into Canada right now. Everybody, everybody's out. I find that the biggest corruption in Nigeria is the corruption of the mind. A lot of people have, like, a lot of people are willing to sacrifice principles and morals at the drop of a hat. And that's from the older generation to right now. You know, so even in, in the collective collective um, thing that you're saying, I feel that like, even that, to me, it can work because there's, there's people coming together yeah. to try and think of how to put, create their own for, form of power yeah. in a non-conducive environment, actually, because every business, you want to start industries, you have no light, you have no, like, so all those things already. I would make if I didn't have to spend money on diesel. Exactly, but you, you do, and you're probably so going to have is, to for so the next thing, years. Because so, you talked about this thing yeah. in terms of um, how quickly people will let go of any level of morals and yeah. all of that. Because one of my issues becomes you can come, and come together as a collective mm-hmm. and say, these are the values we're standing by, these are the things we're saying we want to achieve. Mm-hmm. Now, the moment you leave that collective, can you trust that everybody's going to stick to those values that you've created for yourself? And these things, I believe, have been um, legacy influenced by... Um, the, 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 the strangle on things like on opportunity and all these kind of things because the money that we have access Listen, to is not, it doesn't compete. The truth of the matter is, like I said before, you would make more money if you did things properly. That's the truth. Even for your greedy individual agenda, for you, you would make people, more money. Do we, how many, how many the problem is that how many have without, without, without cursing anybody out, mm-hmm. they are not, they, they have shown us from the past that they are not intelligent enough to even do the corruption properly. It's ridiculous. You know, they're sending Yahoo boys to prison for, for years. I don't support Yahoo in any way, you know, the yeah. fraud. But look at what, look at what, look at what the, gov- the governments, the past governments that we've known about, which will always get exposed after they leave, have done. You're talking about walking out of the treasury with billions of dollars. So, this like, thing, you say they're not and, smart you know, enough, it's, then, but they don't, they, don't, they, have, they haven't been challenged to the point where they need to be smart enough no, to but get what, away what with is it. Going, yeah, look, look, they get away with it because of the corruption. But the problem, look, the truth of the matter is that we need to educate them on how to be corrupt better. I because, don't think that that's the answer. No, it's <laughs> not the answer. <laughs> Obviously not. I'm I being think, sarcastic, but you know what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, no, but I think this, right? Yeah, yeah. But you have to get into government. That's the only thing. But the truth of the matter is this, right? Like, I don't, I'm not against the, the idea of people getting into government. In fact, people, whilst I'm not political, I will always support people I know that want to try and get into government, whatever little way I can or whatever resources I have available, right? Like, because for me, I feel like the more people that get in there, and at the same time as well, I don't even, to be very honest, I've reached the point where, like, even when they do get in there, my hopes are not high, but at least is one start, like, because yeah. you could get in and get compromised as well. The truth is that you can't expect, you can't, there's an analogy where it's like if you put, Bad. If you put like rotten fruit next to a good good fruit in a refrigerator, the good fruit will get rotten quicker. So there's no way you're going to like you know what I'm going to be the one sh- shining light yeah. in this mass of like you know. And oh, so but there's but, a lot more money to be made. But for me, I think that I think that the first thing, first and foremost, what if I was ever getting involved in the political system, and, and by that I mean just voting, right? I feel that <laughs> it is impossible. <laughs> to keep repeating the same mistakes and bringing the same people that have clearly had nothing to offer. One of the biggest issues I've had generally when it comes to um, choices and leadership is no one has a vision that succeeds their, even their time in office. No one is mm-hmm. aiming at what they think Nigeria should look like in 20, 30 years mm-hmm. because you cannot always be dealing with today's problem mm-hmm. and not have your eye on tomorrow's problems. Mm-hmm. And so we need to get to a place where we start to think more of others, which is why I say investing in other people in terms mm-hmm. of education, opportunities. Mm-hmm. We wiped out our middle class effectively mm-hmm. um, decades ago. Mm-hmm. And 
while you do that, you think that you're creating opportunities. Why do most people, most businesses fail at second generation? Mm -hmm. Because once you have you, the person who started something mm -hmm. leaves the space, no one is invested enough in that same opportunity yeah. or that same business. Yeah. It's the same thing we see in our governance when after, for a, after someone else comes to them, they shut down everything the other person was doing before just to do something to create their own personal legacy. Mm -hmm. And so we need to start thinking more about the greater good, creating mm -hmm. opportunities for people yeah. and rebuilding our middle class. A country without a middle class is hopeless. Yeah. I also think to add to that, I feel like one of the things in every field, and it's not just like I'm in the entertainment industry, but one of the things I find is that like there's no capacity development. And I feel that that's crucial in the sense that like I work both in film and in music, right? And so for me, I work with a lot of people who, um, who do different things, camera guys, sound guys, different things. Majority of the people that like actually have these skills, funny enough, where most of their skills were developed in the church because that's places where they yeah. have access to camera equipment and to sound and to, most of the musicians and producers that I work yeah. with got their start in the church as well because that's where they have access to these things. So for me, it's uh, okay, how do I then, just in my own little world, how do I then create opportunities? And I feel that that's where what Femi was talking about, okay, I've been around the world, I've been able to meet people, not just that are artists, but people that want to come and do training or workshops or whatever. So now, how do I facilitate some of those things? So they come to Nigeria, they train. And, and I feel that it's not just in music, like in, I feel the world has gone to a place where people are doing augmented reality. <laughs> people are doing yeah. crazy things on, on, on computers. We're still in, I went to, when I was doing NYSC, I decided, okay, I really want to go and teach. So I'm going to go to a school and I'm going to teach. And they said, what's your background? I said, I did IT for my first degree. And um, they were like, okay, so we're going to put you in like the computer, uh, you're going to teach computer science. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to a school <laughs> and we get there and they literally gave me like a cardboard cutout. And it was a cardboard cutout of a monitor. And then there was a cardboard cutout of a mouse. mouse. <laughs> the, then there was like of a keyboard. And then you go to the kids and you say, this is what? See, monitor, this is what? And that's the computer science class. And I was baffled because I was like, wait, like, we're, not only are we, like we're in the stone ages, we're like literally so far mm -hmm. behind where, and there was, you know, and just basically, there were children in, in the class I was teaching that couldn't read or write. Mm -hmm. And this is like an SS1 class. You know, and so for me, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I think, first, there's, there's in, in, every, in every negative, there's an opportunity. I feel that, like, if we decided that we want to build, one, an IT literate country, right? Because, and, and people like in India, they do that. That's why they call, they service the UK, like most of the call centers you call, because yeah. they developed ICT skills in the, and they know that, okay, we just build these mass call centers. We've given these people all the soft skills. They know how to navigate the software for specific jobs, right? And I feel like we can do things like that. I feel if, and, and I feel because of the, the, the we're, because of the fact that we're at ground zero, it presents an opportunity that we don't need to start at step one, two, three, four, five to climb up the ladder. We can just specifically say, this is where it's going. Step 20, okay, let's get a bunch of graduates. Let's teach them step 20. Yeah. Let them just learn that specifically. So we're able to offer those skills out. And then that begins to create an inflow here yeah. because they have jobs. You don't, a job does not necessarily mean that you have to go and like manually till the land every day because that's not where the world is currently. Nigerians, we speak English, most people. Which we should. So, but no, but even as the fact that we do speak English, why, if you think about it logically, why, and I'm not trying to sound controversial, but I understand the clarity in Nigerians when they speak English to me, then a lot of Indian people when they speak English to me. So why are call centers not set up here? Because they can understand, like we are able to communicate. Yeah. So it's to find people, communicate, train them, and start like creating this thing. But we've already created a system of fear, first of all, with like people be like, we're not going to give details to Nigerians on the phone. You know, like there's, yeah. there's you know, so we have to and it's start. Terrible. And that is even spun. We have to start. Mm -hmm. But then those things are deliberate. You see a country are. like Bali, for example, where everyone's going to Bali for vacation, where there's a deliberate attempt from the government of that country to yeah. sell tourism exactly. to the rest and of the world. what are we selling? 419. 
we, yes, Look, there's a lot like of said, to fix that. Look, like you said, it's what I've been saying from the beginning. I, it's all about private sector and in your own little thing. Everybody should concentrate on bringing in foreign income, and that will automatically raise. From there, we can actually find good governance and the rest of it. Because when people are not thinking about that anymore for themselves, you know, we need to create avenues for people to bring in this revenue in the private sector. The truth is that if we can talk about the government from now to forever, people like me will never get into the government. I won't. And do the, things I, the kind of things I would do, the kind of things that he would do, the ideas that he has spoken about. The truth of the matter is that it will never happen. So for now, the only thing we can do is continue to pull ourselves out of this mess by encouraging... Like he said, this, these skills you're talking about for people to develop in an industry, is the government going to do it? Who, would, who would do it first, the private sector or the government? It's most likely the private sector. There we go. The, the, for me, the cultural mindsets that have been embedded um, at education level, mm -hmm. even before you get to that point, mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, critical thinking, because mm -hmm. we have um, education systems that mean that people pass so much through cramming mm -hmm. their books, people are not understanding or having um, the foresight in their level of thinking that mm -hmm. means that they're able to make intuitive, innovative decisions mm -hmm. on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, and that is something that needs to be taught beyond mm -hmm. how to um, operate um, certain things in the computer, even mm -hmm. if you are able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, when you come into different issues or problems, mm -hmm. do they have problem-solving skills to mm -hmm. work out that stuff? Yeah. And I think that's embedded yeah. in different societies. I agree with you. I, I agree with you completely. I feel that like the, the most critical factor to me, one, is education. Because the things that we speak about and we say there's Nigerian doctors in, in the US and the UK or whatever, that's what they, I was they, are, they are coming from a foundation of a, like now where, like I went to King's College, right? And King's College of my time, which is not that far from now, and King's College of now is like night and day. Yeah. So they're still coming from like another further 10, 15 years behind, which was still even better then. People are across West Africa used to come to Nigeria for different things, different specialities. They used to go to Insuka for arts, they used to come to Lagos for nursing, uh, healthcare, all of that, yeah. but all of those things have completely Just eroded, yeah. right? How? And how did they get that way? Because they, the truth is, again, using the same garden analogy, they were left untended for. It's been over like th three decades, and it's a By gradual. What? Huh? By what? Why were they left un unattended? Because the, 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 the because the funds. The truth of the matter is that the funds that were allocated to those things have not been reaching those things. Exactly. Yes. So what I'm saying is that now we're at a point where, critically. Right, we're going to stop even exporting the, the, the brain drain even that we're pushing. We're going to, we're we're going to have lose that because we're not even training the children anymore. You know, so I feel like the first thing where we even, the first part is that the first opportunity, if you look at Nigeria, before you look at any mineral resource or we have to go and dig the land or whatever, the first opportunity is our numbers. Because the one thing that is going to continue exponentially growing is the population. And that is going to become critical if the population are, one, uneducated, and two, are continuing to suffer as people and as people with influence and as people with, like, there's everywhere else in the world, right? If they want to create, they want to change law or create something, there's a concerted effort. <laughs> there's lobbyists, there's people that come in, there's stuff put in the, in the print, in the newspaper to begin to just like, change minds, incept minds as to where you want the policy to go, right? There's digit, there, now, if you, if you realize something, there was a, something that happened like maybe a couple months ago, and I was, I was out of the country at the time, but I saw it on social media where it was, somebody went to some school, some young girl, something about her school in the East somewhere, and the school was in such a horrible state, and they filmed it, and they videoed it, and, and the government the next day, said, oh, the money that we were, we were actually planning to do that school. So we're starting the thing because it was such a global embarrassment. I mean, there's like literally, we should go to schools and show people the state of Nigerian education. And Nigerians are some of the most intelligent people I've yeah. ever come yeah. across in my life. Yeah. Just the other day, I heard about some some Nigerian girl in Texas breaking some records. Her yeah, she's the youngest person against it. 16 years old. Her GPA was off. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Mm -hmm. 